you. I like Eight thirty. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. All God's people say. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for this uh, intriguing book in the Old Testament to tell us of the story of how we got to stand for our faith. So bless this word to our hearts, and even though the enemy seems bigger and mightier than we are, but we walk with the, the Most High God. In Him we live and breathe and have our very being. So Lord, I just ask your blessings to come upon us, to strengthen us in our commitment to stay with the truth, and the truth will continue to set us free. Bless this word to our hearts, and Lord, may we use it to knock off Goliath. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and it shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So does everybody, everybody's okay with the Greek and the Hebrew now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got the background. I just remember, we opened in beautiful, we opened in, in the empire from India to Ethiopia. Somewhere over the rainbow. And there's a king in town, what's his name? Ahasuerus. Ahasuerus, what's his other name? Xerxes. Xerxes. And uh, he's living high and mighty. He's, cel he's celebrating all of his life. And he has a 180 day party. It's with orange Christmas trees and everything else. So uh, it's, uh, Peter knows all these people. And, uh, and then he uh, decides to take his wife and show her as a thing of beauty. She doesn't want to go. So all of a sudden she is bounced. Okay, her name is Vashti. And then after, after Vashti is bounced, now he looks for a beautiful woman. And so we, we come finally into the person of Esther. And Esther is a Persian word because they were in the Persia area, meaning the star. And she's been called the Hadassah. And if you were with Jewish people, they have a woman's woman group called the Hadassah. You ever hear that with women, the Jewish women? Yes. The, the Hadassah. So, and then all of a sudden we, we, get, we get somebody who kind of took her under the care, and he's called Uncle Mordecai. Okay, so that's where we left off, and we got a lot of background last week. So let's continue. Chapter 2, everybody with me? I'll start in verse 5, okay? Thank you. <laughs> that was good. It was good. Now, uh, look at verse 5 again, just to give you, this is the, the first times in the Bible we have the word Jew. Okay? It's mentioned in the New Testament, especially in the Gospel of John. So this is the first time we have the word Jew. Everybody say Jew. Jew. Now what does Jew mean? It means a person from Judea. There were two tribes that ultimately kind of survived, Benjamin and Judah. The tribe of Benjamin took over a place called Yerushalayim, Jerusalem. You ever hear of Jerusalem? Okay, so th this, is, um, this is the other time that it appears is one time in the book of Daniel, chapter 2. Outside that, there is no mention of the word Jews in the um, Old Testament. In the book of Philippians, St. Paul calls himself, never he never calls himself a Jew. He says, I am an Israelite. That is the more ancient term because there's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Israel, so we are all Israelites. You got, you got the plan? Yeah. All right. We're ready to go here. First five. Now there was a Jew in Susa. Susa is the capital. The capital whose name was Mordecai. So Mordecai comes in. He's the son of J.R. and a, a Shimei, the son of Kish. Doesn't that sound like a dinner you have tonight? <laughs> Kish. And by the way, um, of all things, that was Saul's father's name was Kish. They are not the same thing. It would be um, a big problem because you would have to say this man lived about six, seven hundred years. Right. So this is a different Kish. And notice there, he's a Benjaminite. 
Benjamins. So the idea that he's a Benjaminite, they came from the area around Jerusalem. Okay, when they got a lot of the land. A Benjaminite, verse 6. Thank you who had been carried away from Jerusalem, right, the Benjaminites were in Jerusalem. So how many deportations were there? Three. Four. 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 Yeah, there were four, uh, there were four uh, on the way out. And when you hear of all these people in the Bible, one of them now, you, you know, another one is called Mordecai. Who, who goes out in them? You have, how many ever heard of Ezekiel? Mm -hmm. How many ever heard of Daniel? Mm -hmm. Okay, you, you've heard of all them. And so all these, how many ever heard of Haggai and Zechariah? Okay, so all these are in deportations. And they used to have a kind of a, a center where they would be processed. And the name of the center was called Ribla. R-I-B-L-A-H, Ribla. So here they're carried out. How many ever heard of Jeremiah? Well, Jeremiah never made it in or out because they took him to Egypt and they probably chopped his head off. So they were not very kind to old Yeremiah. Amen. So here, here, if you underline that there, verse, verse 6, you can see one of the deportation among them Judah. Now, Judah is important because that's Jesus' tribe. Do you hear Amen. amen. Uh, carried away with Yekonah. I remember we did Yekoniah a lot. We, we said Yekoniah appears in Matthew chapter 1. And we told you that Yekoniah had seven sons. Jeremiah 22. And when he had all those sons, they were into deep idolatry. And then all of a sudden, Jeremiah says, the Messiah cannot come from this. And so there's a big block of time, and then all of a sudden we, we shoot all the way down to a person called Shiatiel. Now Shiatiel is not the, he kind of picked it up, but when, when was the time of Shiatiel? Around the 530s, so around the 520s. So there was a big gap in, in time there. A big year was 586. What happened in 586? The temple got destroyed. And so we have two prophets um, trying to piece things back together. They're called Zechariah and Haggai. You ever hear those two? When you read Haggai 1 and 2, he says, mine is this, God says, mine is the silver and the gold, and I'm going to build the temple. And it's going to be, when God rebuilds, it's better than it was. Isn't that good? Okay, how many of you just heard good news? So that's Yekoniah. Now when we read that name, how many think you would have missed that in the background, huh? Yes. So then we have Yekoniah, king of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had carried away. So we know what happened to Yekoniah. They're all being carried into a um, exile of sorts. Verse 7. Thank you. All right, we got the thank you man here. <laughs> He had brought up Hadassah, the word Hadassah means myrtle tree. Myrtle, a myrtle tree. And that is Esther, Esther means what? Star. Star. Starry, starry night. All right, so if you underline Esther, here she comes. And the daughter of his uncle, for she had neither father nor mother, so this is a, a, an orphan. And again, you can see who God picks. He picks unimportant people. Now, to be an orphan means you are defenseless. Two people were defenseless in the Bible, orphans and widows. And if you knock down an orphan or a widow in the Bible, you're committing a grievous, almost an avon. You're committing a grievous, grievous <laughs> sin. Amen? So do not knock down. In 1 Timothy 5, there's a warning. Make sure you take care of all widows. Anybody here a widow? Okay, we got one widow here. All right, so you got to take care of her, amen? So make sure you, you, you pay for all her meals for the rest of her. <laughs> I'm trying to give you some aid, all right? I was off, an orphan too. I know, I'm really. I know. Okay, you, you had double whammy. God has taken care of me. Right. God is the good God. Yes. So here we have, then you, know, then you can feel for Esther a little bit, right? Yeah. So you get a sense of the estering uh, going on there. So if you underline that there. Now interesting, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to 
I'll tell you something outstanding. When you read this in the Hebrew, there's no mention of God. When you put it in the Greek, there's a mention because the people are praying. And why, why do you think there's no mention of God or a very rarely a mention? Because this has got to get out and what do you, what do you want to do? You got to Isn't that true today? There's no mention of God? True, it's true. It's kind of generic Except now. Me. Yeah. Except oh, and when they quote a scripture, ready, my my yeah. my ears uh, kind of prick up. Amen. Yeah. Okay, so this is a very unusual book. Good stuff. Good stuff. So when the kings uh, and her mother died, Mordecai adopted her as his own daughter. <laughs> Verse number nine. Thank you. I'm waiting for the, the thank you. All right, thank you. Verse number nine. And so when the king's order and his edict were proclaimed, and when many maidens were gathered in Susa, oh, Susa, the capital and custody of Kegai and Esther, don't you love these names? Please do not name your kids these names. Uh, Esther is, uh, by the way, Esther is a very popular Jewish name. And Mordecai is a very popular Jewish name. Because they're heroes, so you can see you can hear that in the Jewish community. Esther was also taken into the king's palace, put into custody of Hegi, who was in charge of the women. And remember, they had the big galooks there. Who were the big galooks? The eunuchs. The eunuchs. We got some of their interesting names, and they were they were fixed, so they couldn't go after women. And when they were fixed, guess what? They were they were usually muscular, and they they were protectors of the women. So I'm sure that um, Esther saw her share of hunks, but couldn't do anything. They were a hunk, and then they have hunkless. <laughs> uh, she, she understands this now, that's why she's laughing. She likes the, the, the biblical way of explaining things to her. Verse 9. Thank you. And the maiden pleased him and won his favor, and he quickly provided her with ointments and portion of food, and seven chosen maids from the king's palace advanced her, and her maids to the best place in the harem. Now, what has she got to do? This is, how many would like to be treated like this woman? Imagine every single day being bathed with all the soaps. Imagine having all the attendees around you. Imagine wearing the finest clothes, ironed and pressed. And imagine eating all your food was taken care of. Imagine eating the healthiest foods and everything. Else. It had to be perfect. She couldn't have French fries. She couldn't have cheeseburgers. She couldn't have Brother Peter wraps. She could not have any of that. I mean, she had to have everything perfectly done. Amen. So she probably didn't have food tests. So because they wanted to have the most beautiful woman in all the world. Esther, Esther, Esther. Okay? So can you imagine? Every day waking up, oh I gotta go to my my uh, my bath. The water is being drawn. And so imagine having all this Every, every synscical, I'm making up my own words. Every cuticle, everything had to be perfect for the king. Can you imagine what she looked like? Every hairsicle, every part of her body, no painted toenails, everything had to be absolutely outstanding. So if you're a guy, you go, whoa, baby, whoa. That's <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. So you could take your hand and do this and trust me, it had to, everything had to be in perfect formation. Amen. She wouldn't want Miss Universe. You know? Or Miss USA. USA. Now. So she she was really soaked in all this. Verse 10. Thank you. Esther had not made known her people or kindred because they were what? They were Jews. They were Jews and they were under a kind of an edict. They were, remember that it went from India to Ethiopia. So they didn't want to make known the Jews have always been in the minority. Deuteronomy 7 says, 
They were handpicked by God because of their insignificance. So now God is going to do this. And this is your life and my life. God's going to take your insignificance and make you great. How many ever felt not important or you got dropped on your head accidentally by your mother? <laughs> okay, so if there's anybody who ever felt you're insignificant, then, then, then you, you can relate to Esther. Yes? Yes. yes. And uh, so she didn't make known her Jewish identity. Verse 11. Thank you. And every day Mordecai walked in front of the court of the harem. So again, uh, what, what, do we call, what do we call this? This is the harem, okay? And uh, sometimes you would call it a bevy, B-E-V-Y. You ever hear that word, a bevy of secretaries? When all the women are getting together. You know, just talking and talking and talking. And talking. So here comes the harem, all right? So we got to get ready for her. She, she was hand-picked. And to learn how Esther was and how she fared. So what's he doing? So here, here he is with all these women, he's walking what? Back and forth. Esther. Back and forth to see how she was doing. But now there's going to come a time, the Bible says in Numbers chapter 32, verse 23, it says your sin will find you out, but your identity is going to find you out of whether you're a believer. Approximately at this very moment in in human history, 260 million people around the world are under persecution watch. That means any time that somebody can bash in their doors and take their lives. They just had an eight-year-old kill a Christian. An eight-year-old ISIS person just took off a Christian head. So they make it kind of gruesome for eight-year-olds, wouldn't you think? Yeah. How many think they're traumatized after that for a little while? So 280 million are under persecution. Now the books of Daniel and Esther are very important to the Jew because it's only during this time, no, nowhere ever in their history, do they get persecuted until this happens. This is called Jewish martyrdom. And so when, if you're Jewish, what book do you want to read? You want to read Daniel and Esther to say how to stand there against the Goliaths. And what would happen is there's, a, there's a, a mountain in Israel called the Masada. And if you want to really join in the fight with the IDF, everybody know what the IDF is? Israeli Defense Force, right? IDF. You have to spend time on the top of Masada. And what do they read to you up there? They read about Ezekiel and the dead bones. Chapter 37. Dead bones are going to rise again. So if we're going to stay in the fight, because there's very holy Catholic mystics right now saying by July of this year, a major, major, major breakdown is going to happen. And some are calling it the three days of darkness. It's going to happen. And incredibly, uh, what, what's scary is these are incredibly reputable people that I'm reading about right now saying, so we're, we're under persecution watch. We're okay right now. But I believe as time pre advances, we're going to have to stand up and declare your allegiance to Christ or not. Now, everybody here says you believe in Jesus, right? Yes. yes. Uh, on a good day. But the time is coming when you're going to have to say, I believe in Jesus and pay the consequences. This past week, I had a dream that that was happening. I guess I'm reading all this information, you know, your subconscious, whatever you want to call it, and I analyze my dream where I ate too much pizza the day before. But... I, I, I see it coming. I see it here. And you know where, where the hardest fight is? It's right in your own church. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. And they're going to call you nuts if you love Jesus, if you can say an extra prayer. It's a very, very few people say Merry Christmas anymore. Amen? It's almost like a, it's not a, it's a holiday. I, guess I'm I corrected them. I went right after them. Amen? Okay, good stuff. Verse 12. Thank you. Now the, turn, uh, now the turn came for each of the means to go into King Ahasuerus, what's his other name? Xerxes. 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 After being 12 months under the regulations for women, can you imagine 12 months of bathing with oil of a leg? Can you imagine just soaking? I could just see Esther there with all the women. Esther, 
Put your hand in the, the blue. Okay? Maybe she had to do her, her face with the black and put the eyeballs in and there. Esther, put your hand in the blue over here. How many would like to be, I was not going to say manhandled, how many would like to be woman handled constantly? Amen? So, how many, how long was that for? One year. Now, what would happen if I'm soaking in oil of Olay for a year and all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> and finally when King Ahasuerus exerts, he says, all right, babe, come on in. How many know my body would just exude? Yes. Are you enjoying this, sister? Yes. <laughs> Look at her. All right. All right. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to think about like to marry a person like this, you know? Since this was the regular period of her beautifying, six months with oil of myrrh. If you underline oil of myrrh, right? what's oil of myrrh? Yeah. Hadassah. Yeah. See the like Hadassah in there? Myrtle. Myrtle is myrrh. Okay, now, when, when you, when you, when you the, the, the beautiful, now, so even myrrh was a beautifying thing. But it's also for burial. It was for burial, but now we get a now we get a hint here. It's also for beautifying. So I mean, she was covered in life and death, wasn't she? So here we, we here we have the uh, here we have the idea that the myrrh was coming. So put a little note there because what was Jesus offered? The myrrh. Now put a little extra note number two in there. Where do you think the king came from? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So what's plenty, and where did the king come from? Right here. Do you see it? Draw the connections. Connect toys. That's a connection. You got that? Okay. Okay. You see, you see how carefully you've got to read the Bible, see all the connections there? And uh, six months with spices and ointments for women. Oh my heavens, this lady is anointed. Yeah, she does. Now, when you, when you receive sacramentally, everybody here received the chrism twice in your life. Baptism and confirmation. And did you, I, I gotta take you upstairs and smell the chrism. It really is like, it's very nice. because Paul says this, are you all believers in Jesus here? Yes. Paul says this to us, that, we got to have a beautiful fragrance to the Lord. When, the, when this crisis comes upon us and our conscience A is revealed, we've got to have a clear conscience and we're going to be scared because we're going to see our life, whether we're, what destiny some are saying we're going to. But don't get nervous, you still have a chance to. If you're not going to, this priest told Father Ernie, did you ever hear Father Ernie before? Yes. Yeah. This priest told Father Ernie, he says, Father Ernie, the Blessed Mother told me that you're, you're, you are definitely on the way to heaven. So that's nice. I mean, a very holy mystical priest mm -hmm. says, uh, this is happening. May Father Ernie and everybody here go to heaven. Do I hear? Amen. 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 All right, good. I'm going to all amen in here. Doesn't look good together, but no. Verse 13. Thank you. When the maiden went into the king for this way, she was given whatever she desired to take with her from the harem to the king's palace. Again, you see, what? John the Baptist. So we're going to see a lot of details, Mark 6, with John the Baptist. You know, giving anything you wanted, right? So she, she had, like, her blanche. She didn't need her credit cards when she walked out. When you find favor with God, you even begin to find favor with your enemies, even with your overlords, those who are over you. Amen? Verse 14. In the evening she went, and in the morning she came back to the second harem. But she's really in harems, isn't she? Can you imagine all the words they were talking all day long? In the second harem, in Kassia of Shahagaz, the king's eunuch. There's a lot of eunuchs around, because there's a lot of what? Women. women around was in charge of the concubines. Oh, here we go, even more. So, and everybody know what a concubine is? A slave woman. Now, Solomon was married in 1 Kings chapter 11. He was married 700 times. 
with 300 concubines. Yeah. That's 1,000 women. Yes, sir. Father, well, I think Brother Peter and I would both like to know whether the eunuchs, the Ethiopian eunuchs, were open source. Were open source? Brother Peter, <laughs> you better go back to your rap, I'll tell you that much. I am. I'm coming. I guess he doesn't. How could Brother Peter be a girlfriend, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. The concubines are the extra. Yeah. There's yeah. a man on trial Friends tonight. Benefits. Yes. There's a man on trial tonight. It doesn't like look good for him. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He, he really extra raped women and everything else. So we can see a lot of a, a lot of incredible things from him. She did not go into the king again unless the king delighted in her and she was summoned by him. And now, if you underline that, that's going to be the rest of the story because. She can't go in unless invited. Because if you went in and you weren't invited, it would mean your death. Now in Matthew chapter 22, Jesus says on one of the parables, Friend, how did you get in here? Because you don't have a wedding garment on. And what's, what's the underlining moment there in Matthew 22? You've been invited by the union RSVP. Anybody going to heaven? Yes. You got an RSVP. Mm -hmm. You know, you just can't appear at the door and say, I'm here, now take me in. That's when Jesus is going to say, I don't know you. Is, yes, she, is she one of the concubines? No. No? Mm. No, she's in the harem and she's being specially oil of a lady. She's a good one. Mm. Amen. Verse number um, 15. Thank you. When the turn came for Esther, the daughter of, Ahi, of, of Abiyahel, the uncle of Mordecai, for the doctor has his own daughter to go into the king, she asked for nothing except what Haggai, Haggai the king's eunuch, who had charge of the women, advised. When you're a believer in God, how do I know some people, can I give you a little hint, really have a need? Because for the most part, they don't ask for it. People say, do you want to win the lottery? No. Mm -hmm. No, if I win it, I'll give it to you, okay? You want some? <laughs> I don't desire it. So already we know that Esther's desires are just for her people. Just for the Lord. So how many here... Now, it's interesting. This is good stuff you're getting. How many ever heard of Luke 15? Let me show you something in Luke 15. Um, this is hot off the press. In Luke 15, there's, Jesus tells you in three parables. Now, the woman starts looking for what? Silver coins. All right, somebody say, why silver? You know, everything in the Bible has a meaning. Everything has, uh, everybody see that, the silver coins, Luke 15, 1, 2, 3, everybody see? 15, 8. All right, everybody say 15, 8. Yes. Now, if you circle the word silver there, mm -hmm. see the word silver? Yes. Why was the lady going nuts looking for a silver coin? The Hebrew word for silver, the Hebrew word for silver is desire. So, and also too, the silver coin always had on it what? An image. When you have a silver coin, it means I desire this. So, how many coins did the lady have? Ten. Ten. One of them got lost. And here is the whole idea. How many ever heard of a kaput? You know, a pointed, like, like a dunce cap? Remember a dunce cap? And then you would put, that's, that's kind of what the ladies do. And then one of them was kind of pinned on, and one of them got went rolling away. There was silver. And in Hebrew, the word silver means, it means that you have, this is your desire. This, my whole life, this is my desire right here on the top of my head. So one of them got lost because she was looking for a dowry. And 
Number two, there was an image on it. And wh whose image was someone that would back you? And of course, it would be the what? The government, right? The, the Rome. So now, do you see what the evil one does? Everybody here is made in God's image and likeness. And so when Esther knows that she's made in the image and likeness of God, when all of this is being offered from a pagan standpoint, she says, I don't need it. I don't need it. And so she doesn't want the silver of today. So St. Peter says in Acts 3 verse 6, I don't have silver or gold, but in the name of Jesus walk. Because silver and gold had the image of what? It had the image of the deities and the God. Remember Caesar said, I am, I am God. Remember he said, I am the son of Tiberius. So when Esther comes in, she sees all this, beautifully dressed, and she smells great right about now. <laughs> um, all her hair is in the right place and everything else. She doesn't have, how many ever seen people with hair and it loops down here and just all of a sudden you, and they keep going like this. And anybody see the, and the, and the twirling of the hair? When, when I see the friars of the renewal, they're always, and they're all young pups and they're going like this and they're twirling it. And, and then they shake your hand and go, okay, I got some, I got some beard hair and everything else. Okay, how many like have beard hair and everything? But they're always twir they're always touching it. And, and you know, they're sitting there and you're sitting next to them and they're, Okay. You need some of that stuff, amen? So now Esther comes and she says, I don't want that. But now she's going to have to come. And so we already get a kind of a little glimpse of who this woman is. And I think we're doing this because A, you want to see the, the, the show and uh, you want the whole background. And then by the way, I'm giving you a, a report card when you see the show. <laughs> You're going to have to tell me all the inaccuracies on the show, yeah, all right? Really. Okay, so we're going to we're going to go to the show. We'll start to get tickets, and everybody going? Yes. Okay, we're we're, we're going to go. No yawning. We're, we're gonna we're gonna go to the show. Good stuff. Okay. All right, now uh, and it's a brand new show. So Avon, Atan, Pesa, you can go. Now Esther found. If you underline verse number fifteen, thank you. Now Esther found favor in the eyes of all. Now the word for favor again is mercy. So everybody just uh, loved her. When you walk, are you all walking in grace and mercy? Yes. Now here's what I want you to say to the Lord. May I find favor in your sight. May I find favor, are, are you doing that? Say you're worried about going to the doctor. Say your mouth is falling apart. Say your arm is falling apart. Say you're gonna amputate your, I mean everything that's happening to you. Here's what you do, sir. May I find favor in your sight. Do you do that all the time? And you look pretty healthy right now, so I rejoice, amen? So when she walked around, everybody, everybody, everybody liked her, amen? So how many want to find favor in this sight? Do you see a mention of God at all yet? Not yet, right? Okay, and so verse number um, 16. Thank you. And when Esther was taken to the king of Ahasuerus into his royal palace, in the 10th month was the month of Tibet. Now these are not the Jewish months. When you read the Old Testament, there are Jewish months like Tishri, Elul. But a lot of times, what was the, when the chosen people came out of Egypt, they will tell you that the month was Nisan. It sounds like a Japanese car. Right. And by the way, our, our Seder is April 7th, if you want to mark that down. Okay, April 7th is the Seder. It's a Tuesday. Um, when you um, when you have when they were coming out of when they were coming out of the uh, Egypt, what was the name of the month? Abib, A B I B. And so when you look at the Jewish calendar, you say there's no such thing as Abib because there wasn't a Jewish calendar at that time. So the, the month when the Jews celebrate Passover is called what? Nisan. Nisan. And when you read the book of Kings, 1 Kings 4, you have another month mentioned by Solomon. It's called Ethnaim. E-T-H-A-N-A-I-M. Ethnaim. So these are their months of that particular time period they were in. 
Okay? So now notice we have, there it is again, Tibet. 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 Amen. And which one is that? Okay. Um, Miss, uh, what is your name? Miss Carol, what month is Tibet? Don't you know these things? All right, so we're going to find out what Tibet is. So what month we're in. That's an important year. Now, in the seventh year of his reign, verse 17. The king loved Esther more than all the women. I mean, she was a knockout. Amen? And she found grace and favor. If you underline that again, when you find favor in God, you find what? Grace. Okay, now... If you circle those two words, because they go together. So when you say, remember I, I asked everybody a question. I said, is everybody here in the state of grace? And you all said yes. If you were to leave the planet now, are you all going to heaven? It's January. It's January. To Beth, it's January. Very good. So, what does, is it a god or goddess, to Beth? So everybody put it in there for uh, to Beth, January. Tibet is January. So she comes in January. By the way, it, when's the first well, um, when's the first day of the new year for in the time of the Romans was March fifteenth. Mm -hmm. it, it's a Persian origin meaning cold time of the year. Oh, okay. Cold and it is a cold time of the year. Okay. Amen. Florida Florida right now is in the thirties right now. And I gotta laugh. The iguanas are dropping out of trees. So if you're going along and you see these iguanas just go plop, and, and then the news says tonight, they're okay, they're just stunned with the cold. And when it gets warm up, they'll wake up and, and off they go. So if you're in Florida today and you see the iguanas falling out of your trees, um, they're stunned because it's too cold for them. And how cold is it? In the 30s now. So it's good to be, it's good to, I think we're warmer than they are at moments. At moments, okay? So Tibet is January. Everybody put January in there? Yes. All right, now. The king loved us, now circle over verse 17, grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins. So we know she was virginal. So that he set the royal crown on her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. So she now becomes the queen. There you are. Miss Asuarius. Okay, she becomes into the misses. Verse 18. And then the king gave a great bang. Of course, I mean, this guy loves parties. What do you think? He absolutely does. He just cannot stop the party. And I, I bet they have, they have beer and tap or whatever. A great banquet of all his princes. Again, please see overtones to what? Mark chapter. Six and servants. It was Esther's banquet. He also granted a remission of taxes. Oh, this is good. I mean, what is he present? Okay, so uh, no taxes to the providence and gave gifts with royal liberty. I'm married, and there she is. When the virgins were gathered together the second time, Mordecai was sitting at the king's gate. Now, if you underline there, the king's gate. The king's gate is getting the news. Okay, so anytime you're at a gate, you're, at, you're getting news and you're getting the gossip of the city. So it's, a, it's the best time to hear the latest of something. So if you underline there, the king's gate, amen. Mordecai was sitting there, verse number 20, when Esther, did not, uh, when Esther had not made known her kindred or her people. Who was she? She's a Jew. Mordecai had charged her, for Esther obeyed Mordecai just as she was brought up by him. So now we have... Um, not only is she um, virginal, number two, she is obedient. She is an incredible, obedient woman. Of, a woman. Obedient, she obeys. Amen? So we can see that she is a, a model to follow. Um, so if we underline that, verse 21. In those days, as Mordecai was sitting at the king's gate, Bigthan and Teresh, two of the king's eunuchs. They're the, these I mean, eunuchs are all over the place. Why? Because women are all over the place. Amen? who guarded the threshold, became angry and sought to lay hands on King Ahasuerus. And this time came known to knowledge of Mordecai. So what's happening? There's a story within the story developing. Okay? So who the, who are, who's coming to attack? So uh, 
And this time the knowledge of Mordecai told it to Queen Esther. Esther told the king in the name of Mordecai. So there was two guys who wanted to undo the, uh, the king, bump him off, and, and uh, so Esther got the insight. Esther got intel. Amen? When you, when you have grace and mercy before God, God will always give you the intel. The prophet Amos says this. If you go to Amos 3. Everybody in Amos 3? Here's something. Are, are you all following God? Yes. All right, here's something. Here's, here's another promise God will make. Amos 3 verse 2. Okay, Amos 3, 2. Are you there? Yes. Amos 3, 2. What does it say? You all have to be dead. All the families of earth. Therefore, we punish you for all your iniquities. Keep going. God, God, will reveal to, God will reveal to His people the word. Do not walk together unless they have made an appointment. Go ahead. Does a lion roar in the forest when he has no prey? Does a young lion cry out with from his den, if he has taken nothing. Does a bird fall from its snare on the earth when there is no trap for it? Does a snare spring up from the ground when there is nothing? So what's that saying to us? God is going to make sure if you stay with him, you're going to get all the intel. So Mordecai says to guys, now this is going to be his salvation later on. So remember, every detail that we find in the Bible is to save us. Amen? Amen. So now, what does Amos say? Amos says, we're going to get what we need to know to be saved. Now, God never says to us, and this gets me mad about God. He never says, understand, I will give you the gift to understand me. How many here have yet discovered you can't understand God sometimes? Anybody? Like, why does a baby die? And we prayed our best prayers, yes? I don't understand that, but God just says to us, I will never give you the, the gift to understand me as much as I'll tell you to trust me. When you put trust into action, then everything will soon be revealed and everything will fit together perfectly for those who love God. So now comes the time of understanding and she gets to tell Ahasuerus, but oh, by the way, there's two guys that didn't like you. Who are they? Big Fan and Terror. I wouldn't trust those guys. They just want Big Fan and Terror. <laughs> and this came to the knowledge of Mordecai, verse 22. And told it to Queen Esther. Esther told it to the king in the name of Mordecai. Verse 23. When the affair was investigated and found to be so, the men were both hanged down the gallows. Okay. How many know we're getting the whole story of Esther right now? All the little details are, 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 are following through. So please remember all these great details right here. Amen. Amen. And it was recorded in the book of the Chronicles in the presence of the king. Now, in the Bible, we have certain books called Chronicles. And this is not the book of First Chronicles and Second Chronicles. So please do not associate this with First Chronicles and Second Chronicles. It doesn't mean that. What they had is they, they would write everything down. There's another book there uh, when people died. It's called the Book of Jubilees. We don't know where that book is. Perhaps, how many ever heard of the fire in Alexandria, in Egypt? You ever hear that? It was, it was a phenomenal library. Imagine if that were not burned down. Imagine what we could have learned about these ancient peoples and maybe even more about the Bible. Imagine what we could have gathered from that, that library. But the whole, I, I, you think the Holy Spirit allowed it to be burned down? I think so. He didn't want us to find out what was in that library in Alexandria. So now we have the, the Chronicles. Where, where's the Book of Chronicles? The Book of Jubilees. Where's the Book of Jubilees? Don't know. So now they're, they're writing all these things down. They're chronicling it. Chapter 3, verse 1. Okay. After these things, King Ahasuerus promoted Haman the Agahai. Now, H Haman is going to be the... You'll see him on, 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 the, on the show, sir. And then every time now the Jews have their... In, in the month of Purim, this is very providential that we're doing this at this time because the Jews are going to celebrate Purim. Now, he, Haman is not a good man. Now look at the word, next word there called Agag. Right, let's go all the way back. All right, let's go all the way back. 
Okay, let's go all the way back. Uh, they appear right in the book of Exodus. How many ever heard of the group called the Amalekites? The, the, the chosen people were leaving. How many were leaving? Two and a half million. They had guerrilla warfare going on. People would sneak in the back and kill women and children. They were called the Amalekites. God said to Saul when they the first king of Israel, kill the Amalekites. Now, who was one of their leaders? Agag. What, was, what did Saul not do? Kill Agag. Now, I'm going to give you biology 101. He said, let me keep Agag for kind of a prize. But Agag found a little hootsie tootsie. What happens when you have an Agag and a hootsie tootsie? You have you have more Agagites. You got that? You got Agagites. Are you understanding me, saints? And so what happens here is Haman is called the Agag. So guess what happened from that seed? So guess what the Jews have? Poison. What do all Agites want to do to the Jews? Kill them. So here comes anti-Semitism at your best. From mosque around and everything else, they say kill the Jews. Here it is. So here comes Haman. So how many think you would have missed that? You gotta know when you see when you see that this guy was not good. So when God went nuts and said, Saul, why did you kill Agag? That's in 1 Samuel 15. 1 Samuel 15. He didn't kill because how many when you read that story, that's really said he shouldn't kill people, especially all the children. But guess what? The sea was so corrupt and poisoned. How many ever heard of Jericho? They went running in, and what did they do? They killed the children. Now, how many? How many say that's not the God that I know? Does God do that right now? No. Even though today we we discover we killed 62 million babies in this country. And by the way, what's scary about killing 62 million babies? We've got an answer for 62 million blood. That's a lot of blood. Amen? So, God help America. Amen? Verse 1. The son of Hamadatha, don't you love these names, advanced him and set his seat above all the prince who were with him. So guess what? The poison now is right next to a Jewish maiden. This is really getting scary right now. And all, verse 2, And all the king's servants were at the king's gate, bowed down and did obedience to Haman. What is obedience again? Obedience is to bow down at your service. So obedience is, what do you want me to do? Just say the word. And he's, this is called loving it. I am absolutely loving all this, okay? I got all the attention now. This is really good. And I commanded concerning him, but Mordecai did not bow down to do obedience. Uh-oh. Why? Because he's the enemy, number one. Number two, I only bow down to God. Now, similarly, what is going to be the cause of all of the persecution you will experience? The cause of our persecution is you won't bow down to them. You're not going to kiss donkey, baby. <laughs> Do I hear an amen? Amen. amen? So, guess what? When they say, you bow down, and you just have to say, And guess what? You're going to lose your job. You're going to lose your family. You're going to lose your friendships. That's why we're forming this little group of ours now. So that you can have family. You can have friends. You can have somebody you can say, was I right? How many know that the forces opposed to the teachings of Christ are making us always feel guilty for following Him? Have, have you discovered that yet? So now Mordecai comes in. Can you see why... 
he's, he's so great. I mean, if I were Jewish, I'd name all my kids Mordecai. <laughs> Even if it's a girl, I call Mordecai or something like that. I mean, I mean, just stand in there. So this, can you see now why this is going to be used for the Jews as persecution? Do they use this? Yes. In about a month or so, they're going to open this book and they're going to read the whole book again. The book of Esther. Okay? So this is going to be very, it's going to be, and then we're going to get into the month of uh, Adar, A-D-A-R, and then we're going to get into Purim. So we have a minor Jewish feast coming up here. All right, so now, everybody got the picture? Mm -hmm. Now don't bow down, amen? amen. No matter what the price. Um, if, if you um, lose your job, Peter will take care of you. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Then verse 3. Then, then the uh, king's servants who were at the king's gates said to Mordecai, Why did you transgress the king's command? Now, who was, who was, um, was it the king? No, it was Haman. But when you're, when you're Haman, you get the authority of the king. This is called what? Rubber stamping everything. This is called what? Uh, signing checks as many as you want. Amen. So how many, would like, how many would like to have been a Haman? So now what is he doing? He's seething. Now what does transgress mean? It's, it's knowing something. Don't do this or do this. And you say, no. Bow down. I'm not bowing down. Why don't we bow down? It's going to continue. This will continue to the great time that Jesus comes. We're going to celebrate a feast next week called John uh, Bosco. He has a vision that most people don't know about. The vision says he sees planes, he sees these objects flying in the air. He didn't know they were planes. Mm -hmm. And he says the church is going to have a council. And in that council, all chaos is going to happen right after that council. Interesting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Then he says people will walk away from the faith in droves. Right now, my great country of Germany. You ever hear Germany? In Austria? The, they are abandoning the faith they're in droves they're leaving the faith. In droves. Thousands upon thousands of Germans and Austrians are abandoning the faith. The population of churches plummeting like you wouldn't believe over there. And so... And by the way, the German bishops are not helping no. with some of their terrible teachings. You know, they want everybody to receive communion in all these marriages to be blessed. God save the German bishops. Amen. If, if I were the Pope, I'd bounce them all out. Amen. There'd be no German church if I was there. So um, it, it's, just, it's just terrible what's going on. And so we're going to have to make a decision. So I, I like the book of Esther because one of my favorite lines in the whole Bible is coming up momentarily. Amen? So, so we, 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 got, we got to make a statement who we are. Everybody seeing this? So verse 4. So why do you transgress? You know what you got to do. I can't worship deities. Amen? Uh, I told you this before. If, there's all, if, if you were people of different world religions, you were Muslim over here, I don't join you in prayer. I have, I have all this, let's all pray together. I'm like, oi, oi, no. I go to my corner, you go to yours. Because I can't pray with uh, Allah. Well, there's one, there's one God. Yes, but you call God Allah, I call him Jesus. There's, etern there's eternal differences in the two. Amen. So I cannot pray in the name of Allah. So you go to your corner, I'll go to mine. That's not politically correct, is it? Mm -hmm. Verse 5, What do you transgress? And when they spoke to him that day, and they would not listen to him, they told Haman in order to see whether Mordecai's words would avail, for he told them that he was a Jew. Here it comes. Yes. Here it comes. The two most persecuted groups in the whole world, the first persecuted groups are Catholics. Does everybody know that? Yes. The number one group persecuted are Catholics. The second group are Jews. The answer again, why, is because both of them are under covenant. The Catholics are under the blood of Jesus. And by the way, it's not Protestant, it's Catholics. And number two, it's, um, it's Jewish because of the covenant. 
So what does Satan want to do? He wants to persecute you because of the covenant and they want to break the covenant that God made with you. Amen? Amen. And, and Deuteronomy 7. So they want to break all of these things to get you out of your covenant, the blood. One day, um, there was a Protestant minister praying over all the churches in Van Nuys, California. Did you ever hear of that? Mm -hmm. And he came upon a Catholic church and he said to God, should I pray over them? Mm -hmm. And he received a word from God and God said to him, yes. And he said, why Lord, are they even Christians? Mm -hmm. And he said, yes. And then he said, why should I pray over that Catholic church? Here's the answer he got. Because my blood is there. The power of the blood is there. And right now we have this man on Francis Chan. And he's thinking very deeply of preaching about the Eucharistic Lord. He says when you go to church. He's, and he's Protestant. He says the Protestants have it wrong. He said it's not to go in and look at a pulpit with a Bible on it, it's to go and look what Christ has done for us on an altar. Amen. So he, so that's what's happening. So this is why it's very important. So if you circle the word there, he was a Jew. So here comes, what year are we in? About 483, 480 BC, 475 BC. If you want to get the um, kind of time period again. So I'm going to verse 5. And when Haman saw that Mordecai did not bow down or do obedience to him, Haman was filled with fury, but he, he um, disdained the, the, to lay hands on Mordecai alone. So as they had made known to him the people of Mordecai, Haman sought to destroy all the Jews. Now, underline that. Here, here it comes. This, what was the spirit in them? So how many ever heard of anti-Semitism today? Now everybody here knows the roots of all anti-Semitism according to the Bible. The roots are Agag. Okay, so you see Agag there in verse 2? Verse 1, verse 2. Because Saul did not kill him. And so what is Agag? What's, this, what's the seed inside? Kill all the Jews. How many have heard of in Exodus 17, when Moses was up there with his hands? One was holding him up here, one was holding him up here. Remember that? Yeah. Who were they fighting down below? The Amalekites. Who would they become? The Agites. You got that? So how many know we're still fighting them today because they can't stand us? And when Islam became Islam in 636 AD, when it starts coming into focus, what did Muhammad do? He took a little Christianity and a little bit of, of Judaism. He put down some of the things that we both do. And that's why he called the Jews and us the people of the book. Sounds good in the beginning, but in the end he says, kill them. Kill the Jews. Kill the Christians. Amen. They can't stand us because we believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you know why? You know, this is kind of strange. Do you know why we hate Jewish people? Very strange reason. Because we can't stand the way they dress. <laughs> And we can't, I mean, when you're in a plane, you know, I told you, flying Twa, remember Twa Airlines? I mean, you just see them in the airports and they look so strange, what do you say? You know, with the curly cues and everything else. And so they look so different. Why do we hate them? Because they're so different. So what do we say? Kill them. And also, too, the, the rumor has it that they were good in finances. And so... Uh, if you underline that, here's, now here comes the birth. Here comes the birth of anti-Semitism. And as believers in Jesus, does everybody here love Jewish people? Yes. yes. I hope we all do. Okay. You know, in my studies, one of the first courses I took was kind of a course saying, love the Jewish people. 
How many ever heard of St. Anselm? Yeah. Yeah. He was St. Augustine's teacher. He was, how many know, and he's in heaven now, because he's, we call him St. Anselm? No. I think his feast day is August, um, April 21st. And you know what? You know what he said? Burn all the synagogues down. Mm -hmm. uh, I would never tell you to do that. I always say, love all the Jewish people. Amen. Amen. So this is, this is some of the first courses we have. When I, I, I always like St. Anselm. When I find out that he was anti-Semitic, I'm like, St. Anselm, you let me down today. Well, if he could get in, then there's you know, hope, there's for, hope us. for us. Okay, so everybody, I'm going to put a big star there. Uh, Haman sought to destroy all the Jews. That's the birth of the anti-Semitism. Where we see it? The people of Mordecai throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus. Verse 7. Thank you. Now notice we have a shift here. Now notice we go into the Jewish month of what? Nisan. Nisan. Okay, you see, the, you see the subtle change right there? We're in the, the month of Tibet, and now, which is more Persian, which means the cold, which is the January. And then here, here we have, in the first month, which is the month of Nisan. Now, when is the Passover? Nisan. The 14th. Okay, the 14th of Nisan. And then um, Easter Sunday, by the way, just for your FYI, uh, if you want to have a Jewish calendar, Easter Sunday is the 16th of Nisan. And it's called, in the Bible, in, in Leviticus 23, it's called the Feast of First Fruits. Remember when we were reading Paul, he says Jesus is the first born. That's where we got it, because he's the first fruits. And so Easter Sunday, if you want a Jewish, 16th of Nisan. Okay, the 16th day of Nisan, Jesus rose from the dead. Go, Lord, go. Verse 7, the 12th year of King Ahasuerus, they cast a poor. All right, now, underline the word poor. That's where we get the feast of what? Purim. Purim. Yes. Feast of what? See the poor now. What is a poor? What is a poor? A lot. You know, casting lots. Now, when did casting lots stop? Um, they used to have a system called the white marble and the black marble. It's called the Urim. U R I M. How many ever heard of Urim before? Yes. U R I M. And then thumbim. All right, now the thumbim is the black. T H U M M I M. So here comes the poor. Everybody say poor. poor. And we're going to have the feast of Purim. So we'll get into so I underline that that's casting of the lots. Now the early church. What happened? Remember Judas. What happened to Judas? Acts chapter one. He committed suicide. What happened to his insides? They came out. They all came out. Luke gives a description that he hung himself, his insides popped out. That doesn't look pretty, does it? So, I mean, he must have violently really hung, or if his body blew and fell in the wind, he must have, the body must have opened on some rocks down below. He got, he got killed, he killed himself in the valley of Gehenna. That's pretty gruesome, isn't it? Mm -hmm. When they selected for him a man called Matthias, Acts chapter 1. When Pentecost came, they prayed to God. As soon as they picked Matthias, never again did they ever cast lots. The poor ended totally. When we are reading in the Old Testament, the Purim, uh, the Urim, the lights, it mean, literally means lights and the darkness, the thummim. We, we see it developing, but we don't know when it stopped. And so here in the church, they cast their poor, and then they stopped it. Never again did the church ever use poor me. You might have evangelical friends, and they like to talk a lot about Jewish feasts. Did you notice growing up, we never talked about Jewish feasts? So true. Well, never did. You never heard about Jewish feasts. Yeah. Never. And now, now we're talking about them, right? When we celebrate um, the, our, our Passover, 
we are not allowed technically um, to just do a Jewish Passover. Mm -hmm. You say, can I go to a Jewish Passover? We're not in the church allowed just to celebrate Jewish Passover. So if I got their, their booklet and just did it here, I'm not technically allowed to do that because we, we, we would be what? Regressing. Mm -hmm. We have Jesus and we should be what? Progressing. So what do we hear in our, our day? Uh, we hear Jesus all the time. Amen? So, um, and the council, if you, want a, if you want an official document, 1215, the Council 4 of Lateran. Lateran 4, they says don't go backwards. Lateran 4, and who is alive in Lateran 4? St. Francis of Assisi. Have you ever heard of him? Yes. So we're not supposed to celebrate just alone. So we hear evangelicals and say, we're, we're going to do this and everything else. We can celebrate, as I understand it, within the context of Jesus. Okay? So as long as I can give you a Christian background to this. So when your Jewish friends celebrate Purim in about a month or so, guess what's going to happen? You say, well, we don't celebrate Purim in... But what we're now discovering, here's the big B-U-T, is we are now discovering that we have to, we, to understand our Bible. We need, the, we need this background, amen? amen? We need to understand this background. So underline the word poor, amen? Good stuff? Yes. Good stuff. Good stuff. That, that's incredible there. That is the lot. So you already got a definition of the poor? Now, not to be confused, in Greek the word poor is fire. Okay, but this is Hebrew. So the word poor there is the lot, L-O-T. Everybody understand that? Yeah. Before Haman day after day, and they cast it month after month to the twelfth month, with this, which is the month of Adar. Right now, everybody underline Adar. That's a real Jewish month, a real Jewish name. That's when Purim is celebrated. Now, I told you when there's a leap year coming, uh, they have a month because they only have 354 days following the moon. So they have what is called Adar 2. And you know where we're in Adar 2 because they have a very late Passover, like the end of April. So when you say we have a late Easter this year, how many ever said that? Easter is late this year. Do you know why? Because the Jews are celebrating a late Passover. Passover. Are you getting this? So, Moses was born on Adar 2 7. 2 Adar 7 is Moses' birthday. Uh, just for your FYI. So, verse number 8. Then Haman said to King Ahasuerus, There is a certain people scattered abroad. Now, underline the word scattered. Boy, this is like, we're stopping at every pause here. This is called the Jews in the diaspora. How many ever heard that before? Yes. The Jews. What does diaspora mean? It means the seed is all over the place. Mm -hmm. Say I had a big hunk of seed and I just threw it up in the air and the wind was blowing in this room and it just blew it all over the place. Now let me show you a Christian diaspora so you can pick that up. Hold your spot there with me and travel with me. <coughs> to 1 Peter 1. We want to give you all this rich background. So now we're getting ready for the Feast of Purim. Are you with me in 1 Peter 1? Yes. Now see all the areas where he, he speaks to. That's the diaspora. See that? In fact, they even say it. See Cappadocia, Galatia, see it all there? Yes. Yes. That's called, right there, if you want to write it in there, you could write in Peter's Diaspora. Now what happened on Pentecost Sunday? On Pentecost Sunday, the people of the Diaspora came in. One, one Pentecost Sunday, I was in Jerusalem, one of the greatest days of my life. We had Pentecost because we had it outside. The Austrians were, took our place. I could have fought them for it and threw them out. But I was a kind soul back then. So all of a sudden people started coming up to us because we were outside. Arabs came to us. 
Europeans came to us, Africans came to us, and they said, can we join you for Mass? So I had the whole United Nations, all, all Catholics from all the world were coming in. I said, well, this is in English, Do you understand? We understand English, so, so I have all of the, and the Germans were getting, I mean, the, 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 the Austrians were in the Senegal right next door to us, and that's where you get the word Senegal. Senegal is the upper room of Pentecost. Okay, so when we have our Senegal on February 1st, you know, it's Pentecost. So what do we call it for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit? And just as another commercial, February 11th, we're going to lay hands on the sick, Our Lady of Lord's Day, and pray over all of you. So, and, and I'm looking at you. You need it. Amen? Amen. So, do you, everybody see Peter's diaspora? Yeah. Do you see it there? Yes. Okay. All right, back with me. We've got a few minutes left. Back with me to, um, we'll open this chapter 3. Amen? Good stuff? Yes, All right, everybody understand now? If, if it please the king, I'm in verse 9. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. <laughs> if it please the king, let it be decreed that they be destroyed. I will pay 10,000 talents of silver. See the silver again? Yeah. Remember, we, we just talked to you about the silver? Silver means desire. That's the literal root word in Hebrew of silver, desire. Number two, silver has what on it? An image. Who's the image? Of their king, of their royalty. So I'm going to give you silver. Silver, amen? So when Jesus was being betrayed by Judas, what was on it? What were, what were the coins? Okay. You can see a lot of silver in there. And isn't it interesting because the Jews believed in having no images, but the image was on their money. Now on all of our money, don't we have pictures? Yes. Amen. Can you say one day, Alone on the 20. <laughs> Verse number uh, 9. If it please the king, let us decree that the, I will underline silver into the hands of those who have charge of the king's business. Does, again, you see betrayal going on, right? So th this is really up to date with the. Do you see the word God there yet? No. no. You don't see the word God? No. No appearance. But again, when, you, when we're going to look at the Greek briefly, we, we will see God mentioned at the prayer life. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, you'll see that a lot. Verse 10. So the king, um, and we'll put it to the king's treasuries. The king took his signet ring. What's the signet ring? It's your, your, check, your checking account. It's your power checking account. Uh, from his hand, he gave it to Haman the Agagite. All right. Do you see this? Now, when you're reading this, you know who an Agagite is, but when we read it, we, we, we totally lost that. Who is an Agagite? It's the Amalek. It's the, he was the king. Saul let him live, and the seed continued. The seed continued. Are you ready for this? It continued from Saul had um, Agag around the year 1040 B.C. So this is about 570 B.C. So how many years is that? What, 600 years? A little less than 600 years? So that seed carried a long way, didn't it? That, that, that really, when I was in Hawaii, they were telling me uh, interesting stories how the Hawaiian island popped out of the ocean and everything else, and how the seeds kind of blew in. I went, mean, boy, they were really traveling a lot, and how they got, Hawaii has all these very unique flowers not found anywhere around the world. And they said, these seeds blew in, I'm like, okay. Uh, uh, they, they came a long way because I'm in the middle of the Pacific Ocean out there <laughs> surrounded by nobody and all these seeds and all these birds blow in and everything else. So they're telling me these unique flowers only found in Hawaii. Oh, by the way, I was just reading to the staircase of St. Joseph and I, I, and I stood on it. They, they just discovered where that wood is. It can only be found in Israel. Wow. The wood of the staircase, St. Joseph's staircase, I stood on it and um, he built it for three months and there was no nails in the whole staircase. No glue, nothing. It is, it is absolutely, um, and the owner said, Father Billy, you go stand on it. And so I went on the stairs and I said, we're going to sing a song. I, I knew there were Protestants and nondescripts in there because they sold our Catholic chapel. And so... Um, 
I said, Amazing. And everybody was singing in the chapel, Amazing Grace. I ran out real quick. So, <laughs> so I look at the signet ring. Everybody see, everybody see Haman the Agagite? Everybody understand that now, right? The son of Hamadatha, the enemy of the Jews. Underline there, there's the enemy. And the king said to Haman, the money is given to you, the people also. Do with them as it seems good to you. Oh, I'm liking this, he says. I'm liking this. More power, more power. I got the people under me. So he has power of what? Attorney, Attorney. verse 12. Thank you. Then the king's secretaries were summoned on the 13th day of the first month. Okay? And an edict. And according to all that Haman commanded. So when that edict is done, guess what you got to do? Obey to the letter. Even if you're a king. Now, again, who does this sound like? Herod. He, made, he swore up a storm in front of all of his officials. And so, anything you want, dearie. And she says, I want the head of John. Give me the head. Whoa. And so he had, he had to do that. So in the first month, what's the name of the first month? Nisan. Nisan. And an edict according, verse 12, according to all that Haman commanded, was written to the king's satraps and to the governors and all the provinces and the princes of all the people, to every province and all the script and every people in its own language. It was written in the name of King Ahasuerus and sealed with the king's ring. Letters were sent by country uh, courtiers to all the king's provinces to destroy, to slay, to annihilate all the Jews. Can you see why they celebrate this minor feast called Purim? Because the lot's going to fall on them for destruction. Young and old, there it is again, killing everybody. So it looks like from the time they left Egypt to now, it looks like they finally got them. But now God's going to have to use a woman. It takes a woman. Amen. Everybody say amen. amen. It takes a woman to stop the onslaught. Well, here it comes. It doesn't look good. Then we're ready to have an intermission now because it doesn't look good. Women and children in one day, the 13th day of the 12th month, which is the month of Adar, which is next month, by plundering their goods. All right, everybody skip over to the Jewish section, chapter 4. Everybody find chapter 4? Everybody in chapter 4 now? Okay, everybody say, we, we're just skipping over the Greek, right? Everybody know what we're doing, right? And when Mordecai learned all that had been done, verse 1, sir. Thank you. Chapter 4, everybody in chapter 4? Yes. Did you find it in your confusion? Anybody need help getting there? Yeah, I still have I still have chapter 3. What about 14 and 15? Oh, yeah. A copy of the document was to be issued as a decree in every province by proclamation to all the peoples to be ready for that day. Is that the way yes, yes. Yeah. The couriers in, uh, in, in haste by order of the king and the decree was issued in Susa, the capital. And the king and Haman sat down to drink. Like he's saying, I got it. 13. Oh, thank you. 13. Uh, where's 14? Right. The Greek interrupted us, right? Yeah. And, uh, thank you. But the, the city of Susa was perplexed. What's going on here? When Mordecai and all had been done, Mordecai tore his clothes. I want to see, what is, any mention of God yet? No. No, no, no. no mention of God. Interesting again, isn't it? Now, can you, now, when there's no mention of God, that means God's all over the book. So what does he do? He tears his robes as a sign of repentance, as a time of disgust. What happened when the trial of Jesus, what do they do to their clothes? They, they, they rip, now, remember what's going to be ripped? The curtain and the veil. And so what do they got to do? Because they're mini veils, they, they rip their veil. So here comes Mordecai now, ripping his own personal veil, his clothes, right? Do you see it there? So, and, and put on sackcloth, I add ashes. All right, here's where we get Ash Wednesday. Now, what's, what's the birth of Ash Wednesday? The birth of Ash Wednesday is Genesis 3.19. You are dust, and unto dust you shall return. return. Everybody remember that? Yes. Now, let me show you something about Ash Wednesday, because this, is, is this timely or what? Okay, now no, notice that the ashes are coming up. All right, now when you go to chapter 3, verse 18 and 19 of Genesis, um, 
Let me turn there myself because I'm having you turn there and it's painful. All right, now, when you go to Genesis chapter 3, everybody with me in chapter 3? Yes. Now, let me show you something again. Just review. This is, you probably already know this, but I just want to point this out to you. Everybody go to verse 18. All right, everybody see verse 18? Yeah. Genesis 3, 18 and 19. If you underline that. Thorns and thistles shall bring forth you. Everybody put down, that's the birth of the crown of thorns. What verse is that? What chapter? Genesis chapter 3, Genesis 3. Everybody see the crown of thorns there? Now when you look at the crown of thorns, everybody have a crucifix in your bedroom? Yes. When you look at the crown of thorns, it's, it's our toil, it's our cursed. Galatians chapter 3 also, verse 6. It's our, our being cursed. Is anybody here cursed? No. Are you all free in Christ? Yes. So, uh, underline there verse 18. You can put in the crown of thorns. You shall eat the plants of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread. Lachem. You are dust, and unto dust you shall return. Do you know when I go bless bodies and send them into the ground? What's, what line do they look you are dust, and unto dust you shall return. Mm -hmm. So now back with me to um, chapter 4. Everybody back with me in chapter 4. And there it is in chapter 4. What does it say there? Ashes. Now please do not sing to your kids, ashes. Ashes, we all fall down. That is the bubonic plague you're singing about. Have you ever sang that song? You're in here. Yes. Yes. Ring around the room. Do you know what you're singing? You're teaching a kid a song about the bubonic plague. I was watching the House on the Prairie yesterday, and that song was being sung by Nellie. Well, get that off your, your TV. <laughs> so we have here, back in uh, uh, chapter 4 of, of Esther. Thank Sackcloth you. and ashes went out in the midst of the city, wailing with loud and bitter cry. So there, because why? The Jews are going to be killed. Why, why does Haman want to kill them? Because Satan wants the Jews dead. Why? Because they're under a covenant with God. And so because he can't break it from God's end, so he says, let me kill all the Jews. Is that spirit today? Yes. Are you going to see an attack on Israel? Yes. Are they walk, working on one at this very second? Yes. Right now, the Jews are surrounded. Ready? You know how many enemies they have? One. 175 million enemies surrounding Israel right now. So anytime constantly takes her mother into Israel, you're surrounded by 175 million. But you know what? I feel as safe as anything walking there. Yes. You know why? It's God's land. Next to the Lord of the Republic of the Dominicana, it's God's land. Amen. Amen. It's God. There's a, there's a holy net of God all over the place. How many ever told somebody you're going to Israel and they go, why are you going there? Did they ever try to stop you or say you're not yes. going there? Yes. Amen. Okay, so we're, we're done. No one else might, uh, with a loud bit of cry, verse 2, he went up to the entrance of the king's gate, where no one might enter the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. And that's Ash Wednesday. What if, what's another meaning of Ash Wednesday? We're going to die. We, we have been we have had the death sentence given to us. And now next week, she's going to do something. It is so unbelievable. It's one of my favorite lines in the whole Bible. And I hope you and I are with her and Queen Esther. Are you liking the story? Yes. Father, we just ask your blessings upon this truth. And with all the persecution and the ones to come and the ones that are going on now, May we stand with the Jewish people. May we stand with our fellow Christians and proclaim Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. To be continued, chapter 4, chapter 5.